The technique that we're going to look at today is what's called completing the square. It's not necessarily my first choice technique, but if you have to solve a quadratic, it's one more method that you have in your quadratic solving tool belt. So again, it's called completing the square. And in this method, you must add a constant to create a perfect square trinomial. So there's two questions you're probably asking yourself. The first one is, what is a constant? And the second one is, what the heck is a perfect square trinomial? Well, a constant is just a number. It's a number that does not have a variable next to it. It's just a digit. And a perfect square trinomial looks something like this. x squared plus 10x plus 25. And the reason that that's a perfect square trinomial is because it's x plus 5 quantity squared. It's uh, something being squared, and in this case it's a binomial, and in this case the result is a trinomial, so we call it a perfect square trinomial. So here's how you do completing the square. You find half of the b term, and remember the b is the middle term, it's the coefficient of x, because remember all of our quadratics are in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Then what you do is you square that result. And then the final thing is that you add that number that you've just gotten from step two to your original expression. So let's practice completing the square. I've got this expression x squared plus 6x and I have to complete the square. So first thing that you do is you take half of the b term, which in this case is 6, and half of 6 is 3. Then according to step 2, you take that number and you square it. And then in your final step, you take your original expression and you add that number on, and that's completing the square. So I've now turned this into a perfect square trinomial. The trinomial that um, gets created from what binomials is x plus 3 squared. It's x plus 3 times x plus 3 because you want to find a pair that multiplies to 9 that gives you positive 6 in the middle. Now you can't just go around randomly adding numbers to expressions because that doesn't maintain their value. So you wouldn't necessarily use this in an arbitrary situation like right here example 1. What we're going to do though is we're going to take this process that we're practicing and use it in an equation to solve for the value of x. So we got one more example of practicing completing the square. So you take half of b, which in this case is negative 9. Don't forget it's negative, And that's negative 4.5. Negative 4.5 squared is positive 20.25. So you grab your original expression, x squared minus 9x and you add 20.25. Now in order to find the binomial that created x squared minus 9x plus 20.25, we would say find two numbers that multiply to 20.25 and add to negative 9. And you go, holy cow, how am I supposed to come up with factor pairs of 20.25? That's ridiculous. And the answer is, you're not. You're not supposed to. Because what I want you to recognize is that the number that you got when you did half of b is the number. Half of 6 was 3, and you see 3 was in our binomial. Half of negative 9 is negative 4.5, so our binomial is x minus 4.5. So the answer is right there in the steps. You just have to know where it is. All right, now we're going to take this technique and use it to solve an equation. So I have to solve this quadratic by completing the square. Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to get this expression over here on the left to look like the ones over here where it was just two pieces equals a number. So I want to add three to both sides. So what I want to first start with is x squared plus 8x 
equals 20. And then it looks like what I'm used to dealing with because I can easily find half of B. I don't know why my 8 isn't closing. So here we go. Half of B is half of 8. And half of 8 is 4. So then you take 4 and you square it, and that's 16. So what I'm going to add to x squared plus 8x is 16. And what you learned back when you first learned about equations is that if you do something to one side, in order to maintain the equality, you have to do it to both. So I have to add it to both the left and the right in order for it to maintain its equality. Well, this is x plus 4 squared, and that equals 36. Now I can use the technique that we used in the last lesson because I have a quantity being squared and it equals a number. So that's our lesson 9.2 using square roots. So let's take the square root of both sides and I get x plus 4 equals positive or negative 6. Don't forget the negative. And now let's bring it up here so I can solve. I've got x plus 4 equals positive or negative 6. So what I'll do is I'll subtract 4 from both sides. And there are two possible answers. One is that x equals 6 minus 4. And the other is that it equals negative 6 minus 4. So there are two possible values of x. One is 2 and the other is negative 10. And if you don't believe me or you just want to check, Take 2, plug it in here, and see if you get a true statement. Take negative 10, plug it in here, see if you get a true statement. All right, take a moment, read example 3. So what they're asking you is, when does this stone hit the water? And what's your height when you're on the water? That's right, it's zero. So way back in chapter seven and eight, we dealt with setting things equal to zero. So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna say when the height is zero, I'm gonna plug that into my equation and solve for the time. Now the first factoring that I taught you to check for is GCF because if you can pull out a greatest common factor, it will make your life so much easier because you'll have smaller numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by negative 16. And I choose negative 16 because then this leading coefficient is positive. And if you do something to one side, you should do it to the other, but it doesn't change the zero. Zero is still zero. So I've got zero equals. Now, Normally, I would say put the negative 16 out front when you do your factoring, but we're not actually factoring. We're actually straight up dividing by negative 16. We're making the numbers reduced by negative 16. The negative 16 is disappearing because I'm actually dividing by negative 16. I'm not just factoring. The difference between factoring and dividing is that factoring is when it stays in front and dividing is when it disappears. So if I go through and divide by negative 16, I get t squared minus 2t minus 1. Now this expression right here, t squared minus 2t minus 1, is not factorable. So we can't use our 9.1 technique, which is graphing, we can't factor it to solve for the zeros, and we can't use our 9.2 technique because there's too many terms. So I have to use my completing the square method. So I'm going to bring this negative one to the other side, so I just have um, an expression like what we dealt with earlier where there were just two terms. So I have one equals t squared minus 2t, and I didn't show it, but what I did was I added 1 to both sides. So now I take half of the b term, half of negative 2 is negative 1, and then negative 1 squared is 1. So what I've got is 1 plus 1 equals 
t squared minus 2t, and then there's my plus 1 again. So I'm adding this, but I have to add it to both sides because then it maintains the equality. This expression right here is t minus 1 squared, and that equals 2 because I had to add 1 on the other side as well. So we use our technique from 9.2, where you can square root both sides. And I get t minus 1 equals the square root of 2. So there are two, oh, positive and negative. Ooh, oops, holy cow. Well, actually, we'll see. One of those is going to get rejected in a moment. Um, for simplicity, I'm going to turn this into a rounded value. I know, don't tell anyone, shh, I'm using rounded values. But I'm going to turn this, and this is going to say plus or minus 1.4. That's my rounded value. Equals t minus 1. So I still have to solve for t, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And one possible answer is negative 1.4 plus 1, and the other one is positive 1.4 plus 1. So my values of t are negative 0.4 or 2.4. Well, what does t stand for? Stands for time. Can you have a negative 0.4 seconds? No. That's ridiculous. So what we do in this case is we actually put a big X over it and we write the word reject because we're rejecting this as a possible answer. There is only one answer. And this is our first time where we have a quadratic when there's more than, um, where there's one answer being rejected, where there's only one answer. We've always had two answers. T is 2.4 seconds. And the reason that I rounded that value is because if I wrote square root of 2 minus 1, or whatever it was, you wouldn't really understand that to be a negative value. Whoops. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.